we intend to show amazing fashion trends all around the world from all walks of life and all cultures within our portrait system. Greetings and salutations. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. My name is Kenneth, co-founder of Aquila Interactive and executive producer working on Gilded Destiny. Before we dive into today's topic, I want to express our gratitude for the amazing feedbacks we received on our Ground Warfare Dev Diary. We love reading your comments and responding to your questions. As always, if you have any more questions, please don't hesitate to join our Discord and ask. We are more than happy to answer. See you there. Today, we'll talk about how we include portraits in Gilded Destiny. Leaders have a crucial role in shaping history and impacting game mechanics. They add a distinct flavor of historical immersion and offers players more choices when it comes to the what-if scenarios. At the turn of the 19th century, the Industrial Revolution gave rise to an unprecedented level of prosperity and wealth. The period saw the birth of new machine manufacturing processes that made fashions more and more accessible and selections ever more diverse. We intend to show amazing fashion trends all around the world from all walks of life and all cultures within our portrait system. When we designed a portrait system, we had several goals in mind. First, the portrait needs to be visually stunning and invoke the charm of the 19th century. Second, we want to ensure that the game was highly moddable, allowing modders to easily add new characters, although some photo editing knowledge would be necessary. Third, we aim to create vibrant historical figures while also generating a large number of characters to fill the various positions in the game. Lastly, it was important for the historical characters to appear reasonably accurate and avoid a cartoonish style. Considering these criteria, we decided on an animated oil painting style that combines a system for unique figures and a system for swapping outfits and faces. This approach offers a balance between all the needs. On the one hand, we can make unique historical figures with a wide range of motion, which we refer to as special portraits. On the other hand, we have a swappable portrait system that allows for outfit and head swaps, albeit with more limited animation and a fixed pose. We call those standard portraits. In both type of portraits, characters are divided into many parts, allowing us to create animated movements. Take a look at these examples to see how a character is divided into several parts. Additional elements are drawn around each part to facilitate a range of motions. We accomplish the entire process using a 2D animation software called Spy. Although we do not anticipate most modders being familiar with this tool, those proficient in spying can create their own animated portraits with custom skeletons and incorporate them into the game as mods. However, we also have a middle ground solution for modding, which caters to the majority of our players. Special portraits are reserved for important historical figures due to the considerable time and investment required to create them. These portraits feature unique animations, allowing for a broader range of motion compared to standard portraits. The eyes in special portraits are meticulously cut out to facilitate eye movements, and the artwork is tailored to specific individuals. As a result, you cannot swap outfits and heads with special portraits. While modders have the option to include their own special portraits, it entails building custom animations using Spy, and then import into our game. While it is certainly achievable for some modders, it requires a significant amount of effort. The standard portrait system, on the other hand, is specifically designed for the majority of characters in the game. It is categorized based on factors like gender, weight, and skin color. Portraits within each category share the same angle and animation, enabling parts to be swapped out. This flexibility allows us to adapt outfits based on the character's role, or create specific attire for different countries without having to redraw the same outfits for every single character. This capability enables us to introduce a variety of new faces into the game relatively quickly. Moreover, this system also grants modders the ability to easily add new faces to the game. As shown in the footage, the last two heads were generated by artificial intelligence, which we will discuss next. We are fully aware of the importance of allowing players to add new characters easily. 
and it's a top priority for us. So, how do we envision enabling players to quickly add new characters? First, you have the option to reuse outfits and backgrounds from standard portraits, meaning you only need to provide a different head. This simplifies the process of creating unique characters. Secondly, we leverage the power of AI. Our system is designed to allow you to generate a head using the AI of your choice and incorporate it into our game. This AI-driven approach provides a convenient and efficient way for players to expand a number of characters within Gilded Destiny. I want to be clear though, the method I am about to show you here is not what we use internally, but is a method we came up with which we believe is suitable for models. Here is an example of us testing the process using Stable Diffusion with Invoke AI to generate portraits quickly. It has a feature called United Canvas that enables you to regenerate a particular part of a picture using a mask and prompts. Note the mask is placed very carefully around the neck, where it connects to the rest of the body. This method allows us to generate a head that fits onto the standard portraits. While this does not generate add a quality standard for our official content, we believe it is a perfectly adequate way for the community to create mods with. Once a head is generated, you'll need a photo editing software like Photoshop or free alternatives like GIMP to isolate a head and save it as a transparent PNG file. From there, you can easily add it to the game using our editor. Now, let's talk about generating new outfits that fit the skeleton of our default spines. For this, we utilize a technique called control nets. Currently available on Automatic 1111 and an upcoming feature for Invoke AI. Control nets allow us to generate outfits while maintaining a consistent pose. This ensures that the generated outfits seamlessly align with our animated skeletons. Feeling overwhelmed? Don't worry. We will create a step-by-step -step tutorial and provide helpful tips in the future. The AI generation technology is evolving rapidly. So it's highly likely that by the time our game is ready, the process will become even more user-friendly and accessible. All right, that concludes today's Dev Diary. Thank you for watching. We would love to hear your thoughts on our portrait system. Do you like it? How do you plan to use it? Share your comments below or join our Discord to join the discussion. In this video, we have provided a glimpse of what the leader mechanics will look like. However, Stay tuned for our next Dev Diary focusing on leader mechanics. We'll delve into where leaders will be utilized, their significance, and much more. Stay tuned. Lastly, remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and if you have not done so already, add Gilded Destiny to thy Steam wishlist. Until our path converge once more, we bid thee farewell.